guys. Welcome back to the Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today we are going on a shop tour. So we're going to go visit with Kevin Brubaker. He's an old family friend of ours. Kevin is the maker of Brubaker guitars. Uh, he's been doing it for a while now since he was in high school and started kind of just having fun with guitars and then he decided to start making a company. So we're going to go, we're going to check out a shop, see some of the stuff that he does, see his processes and his tools and just kind of talk shop and hang out. So it should be a fun day. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's go. www.brubakerguitars.com is the company. Uh, I've been doing this for 30 years and I got into it uh, back in my high school days. Uh, I grew up in a musical family. Um, Mom and dad were both piano teachers, piano players, and the whole family was encouraged in the music. In music. So I played uh, piano, trumpet, and did that up to about ninth grade, and that wasn't cool. So once I kind of discovered the bass, then that was cool, and that's kind of just kept me going. And that was about like 11th grade. So, you know, a couple friends were in band, that kind of thing, and they go, they need a bass player. So I took up the bass. And uh, one thing led to another. I only had to, ever had to bought two basses, I redesigned and repainted and got into the whole, I just immersed myself in it. I was a tinkerer. I like to work on dirt bikes. I like to do everything, mechanic. You know, the band needed a PA system, so I built speakers. <laughs> and, and that's kind of how it starts with a lot of guys, you know. Um, then, you know, I was, I was in the carpentry world, I was in the home improvement world. That's what I did for a living, so this kind of, you know, this was like a perfect fit for me. Uh, and I, I fell in love with it. it was, I thought, hey, I can do this. Read books, read, watched videos, and you know, learned how to do it. I learned how to do it the hard way. I didn't study it or anybody. I just learned how to do it, figured it out. And then got into it, and more and more, you know, this was over a long period of time, but I, I got into making a whole instrument. And then finally, you know, in the playing circles of, of music, I, uh, I would have guys check them out, of course. And myself, I'd take them out. That was the most exciting part. Like, you know, making an instrument, taking it out and play it and seeing how it sounds. Um, and just kept tweaking it and kind of moving forward with that. Making an instrument is one thing. Making a company, selling them, and being successful is a whole other different thing. <laughs> So Kevin, tell us a little bit about this area. What's the main kind of stuff you do in here? And, uh, and then we'll go from there. Uh, I daydream a lot. No, it's <laughs> good. Um, just basic tools, uh, basic setup, um, uh, joiner, bandsaw, thickness sander, pin router, you know, and various other little tools to do the process that we do and make it nice and efficient. Dust collection, you know, try to make it as efficient as possible. Um, 
My process is really pretty straightforward, um, meaning we do a lot of stuff with uh, templates and a pin router, overhead pin router. So um, the woods, we use a lot of different woods. We use, this is swamp ash. We use swamp ash, maple, um, mahogany, um, various, you know, decorative woods sometimes. And is this, this is a, an actual neck that's being made or yes. is this a template? Yes, this is an actual piece. Okay. So I'm going to show you the starting process on it. Um, this is going to be a pretty straightforward build. And um, I have a neck joint that's a little different so uh, than most. It's called a neck, the, the bolt through. Okay. And it, a pocket gets routed in here. Uh, this gets mated to it. So I call it the bolt through. Being unique and want, wanting to do different things right, right. over the years. Well, people talked about the neck through and the bolt on and right. the very, those, two, you know, I said, I'm going to make my own. Yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I made something that's, you know, a little, a little different. That's, a, this is a, not really one to show, but anyway, this gets hogged out. Um, this is the template. This is the shape of the neck. This would be the pocket that this fits into. Okay. So basically, so we were looking at the back of this guitar right now. This is the this top is the this is the back and this is the top exactly. Okay. So what on the templates and we have multiple. If you pan over here, you can see all the templates. Right. And all those templates have specific shapes. Okay. The the electronic cavity routes, which are two and three steps. Okay. The pickup routes. The neck pocket routes, whatever you're, whatever you're putting on the instrument. So, so this, so this is your actual routing yes. spot. So yes. we run on a pin router, mm -hmm. which is just awesome. I, I have never used a pin router, but I've met some other people who use them. And like, how crazy is that? When you have right. this set up with just this, you run it through, follow that, it's going to cut exactly to your specification. Yes, so, it will, and it, it is a you know, probably one of the fastest ways to do this process. Right. Um, right. You just have to make sure that your templates are completely right. accurate. Because <laughs> whatever your template is, is going to rattle in the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if the machine's out, right. it's going to be even worse, right. you know. Uh, so you got to make sure that those things are good. But this particular wood is um, what's called cooked wood or tortified. I believe is the proper term. Right. And um, they, they put it in a vacuum chamber uh, to elevate the heat so they can they can heat it up to a higher temperature and it structurally changes the, the wood a little bit so it's stronger basically wood would do this over many many years they just right. speed up the process yeah let's think about that working with templates and how you attach it and, you know right. you have to kind of prepare know how deep things are going because you don't want those holes to show up later in your work so. That's Double great. side awesome. tape works really well, uh, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> screws better. That's one of the yeah. That's one of those woodworkers' secrets. Double side tape. I've heard a lot of people say that. It does it works great? We yeah. use it. We use a lot, yeah. but and even for you know some some big work. Right. So, cool. but awesome. yeah, this is a whole. Um, there's a whole process to this, and once it's final final done, and I cut that meat out, then I take it over to the machine with a big cutter bit on it, and that's even more scary. <laughs> We need a saw that we could do uh, custom scale lengths. Scale length um, on instruments can change. Uh, normally on a bass, you're dealing with 34, 35, but as we went on making instruments, um, we got requests for custom scale lengths. So um, this particular saw was one we made that had our particular scale length with 24 cutters. Okay. You push the neck through with the fingerboard on it, and it cuts them all at one time. But that was specific to the one scale length. Right. So when we went to, instead of hand cutting them, we thought, well, how could we do it? So we went and got a saw. Um, you can buy the blade from the Stuart Mack. Yeah, yeah. 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 so 22.022 thousandths thick. And we just made a bed right. and then figured out you can you can go on any like student Mac or all parts or any of that and you can right. calculate your frets and right. where your frets are going to lay so you lay it out and then we made the templates 
and that's for so, specific. So for scaling, that that depends. That tells you how the guitar is going to sound. So you have to be setting up frets. They have to be set at certain distances. Exactly. The there's right there's so a calculation uh, that was done way 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 long ago. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and uh, but now you can just go plug the information in a website and get the get the scale length. So um, a, the scale length on an instrument is determined from the nut to the center of the highest string. Um, and like I said, typically a guitar is going to come in around 25 and a bass would come in about 34. But there's people that, you know, I mean now like everybody's taken that to the nth degree. So there's basses are 30 inch scales. That's real popular. The shorter scales because the bass is a little smaller. People went to 35 scales because it was a better B string. Right. Um, in the guitar world, I'm not so sure about, like, the scales that mm -hmm. seem to stay pretty consistent. But anyway, right. with what we were doing, people wanted different scales. Right. So we got requests for 30, 32, 34. We're going, okay, so what do we do? So we built these, this machine that does that, and it's pretty effective, actually, to this day. This is just a, your basic fret press. Um, it, you know, that's great. I love how this is, uh, has like a circumference to actually run over the board. It's a r radius to the actual fingerboard of. Uh, I can change them out and right. do different radiuses. So you, have different, you have different ones, different presses. Yes. Oh, yes. Cool. So things for, uh, well, uh, for six, seven, five string. Do you have solid brass. Yes. Do you have these made for you specifically? Uh, yes, these okay. had to be made. You can buy. More and more, the uh, Stuart Mac, Mac yeah. and Stuart McDonald's yeah. and all parts and Luthiers Mercantile and probably many more than I'm not they thinking of. More more stuff yeah, they, they're, they're uh, Grizzly is one of them too. Yeah. They're catering oh, more yeah. and more to guitar builders cool. and machinery and so forth. But yeah, back when I started, there wasn't a whole lot of anything, and you had to make, right. you had to find a machine shop and have a machine shop make it for you. That's so. Awesome. Not too much involved in this other than a fret bender on the end, which oh, nice. you know, bends a fret. Sometimes you can get it, uh, we, right. we get it in, in rolls that are right. already pre-bent, which saves time. But normally, uh, fret wire will come in and uh, you get it in straight lengths. Okay. And then you just... The, the radius fender on the end, you set it to whatever radius to match your fingerboard, cool. and you can bend it. And here's a, a piece of fret wire that's mm -hmm. going to be cut, so then this would be pressed onto your Pressed onto your press board, board. yeah. And that's that other machine we're looking at with the saw, that's your cutting yeah. your frets for this. So. I you know, assemble most of the stuff on the other side of this wall, have the drill pressed here, it's convenient. Walk over, do a lot of stuff from the sanding benches, right maybe buff a quick spot on the instrument or something. So um, just try to make it as the, the setup is the minimal amount of, you know, because we're, right. we're really lazy. <laughs> we don't want to do it now. I'm just kidding. You got to do it. Yeah, no, it's just, it's not, right? yeah, yeah, it's, exactly. it's got to be efficient. Yeah. So these are downdraft tables. Uh, just a quick way to get the dust outside. It's just airborne stuff. Okay. Um, we don't put anything out into the atmosphere other than just airborne, some airborne dust to just right. get it out of the Part shop. Of the yeah. right. You catch all the big stuff in the big dust collector and you get all the airborne stuff out. So these are just downdraft tables that basically pull everything down when you're sanding a complete instrument or whatever. Cool. So, and buffing wheels to uh, do the final wet sanding and buffing. Um, like right now, I've got an instrument that I'm just cleaning up, you know. I'll probably run over it with a little bit of 2000 to get some imperfections out that um, I'm not happy with. And then we'll buff it on the buffing wheels. And What's this wood? What is on this is here? Buckeye Burl. Oh, man, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's very marvelly looking. Pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. So um, this is done. It's just I had to, you know, you, you look it over in different lights. And right. we have yeah. different lights. Um, some really, really powerful right. and bright. I was kind of looking. I was wondering about yeah. the other different lights around. You Everywhere know, you turn, you see, see something. You go, ah, oh, I missed that. So, oh, But the different lights help you get it to where it looks like a piece of glass.
and then we wet sand and even dry sand at 800, lock it out using a block to keep everything level, and then take it up to about 2,000, 2000 grit, and from that stage you can hit it with the wheel, and then work it. You want to work it and heat it minimally, so you don't want to heat the finish too much because it'll it'll do weird things to you. So you try to heat it. So as you get it on there, yeah. it starts to heat up and it hits a certain it temperature. Does. And you're it does. There's a lot of friction, but taking the grit to the highest level you can take it minimizes how much time you spend on the wheel. So typically, that process is about maybe 40 to 45 to an hour, depending. Finishes do what they want to do, and it, it's it's a nightmare of a process <laughs> sometimes to get it super leveled out. Right. This is uh, just a regular 10 by 10 spray booth filters. Um, so he's going to get ready to spray a couple necks, okay. and these are in the phase of <clears throat> the first base coats. So we'll spray a base coat sealer on the bare wood. Uh, the bodies already have it on, and those bodies made up with the necks. And then the process begins. So this, <laughs> this one has some tape already on it. Has this been like tape pulled off, or is this one that's being sprayed specific areas? Uh, just specific areas. In the process okay. of finishing, um, you know, it, it you would hope that it all goes 100% perfect, but it never does. That's in the right. instrument building process or anything. Right, so right. you have to spot spray some areas sometimes and blend them in, and uh, that's what we do. They're buffed out, they're fitted, uh, all the fret work is done, and we're jumping, you know, um, perfectly to how I've developed it over the years. Right. And then all the parts, the pickups, the um, electronics, um, the tuners, the nut, um, all the interior electronics, like I said, the guts have to go in. So it takes about maybe another uh, two to three hours, um, you know, if things are going right. <laughs> right, yeah, and you know what you're doing, exactly. so that's two to three hours for you. So, but everything's kind of fitted just like you see in the hot rod things, like they fit them and they fit them and they put them in the paint and then they bring them out. We kind of do mimic that process. So, you know, I fit it, I sand it, and fit it again. And then when it goes through the finished process, I fit it again and make sure everything's tight. Sand all stuff yes, all and then when it comes out, it's in two pieces. I made everything up. I do all the final everything. And uh, after doing it for 30 years, <laughs> I can hit the marks quickly right. um, you know we have processes in place but <clears throat> so this is what a final piece would look like and they gotta the the, the thing about these about instruments right. in this world that we're in they gotta look great they gotta sound great they gotta play great they gotta feel and play yeah, yeah. and good, yeah. it, it's not just it'd be wonderful it's just a coffee table and it sat right. there to look good which is <laughs> Now we're, we're looking at another guitar here, and this has some special things that we've talked about. So tell us a little about what's going on with this guitar and how it's different from what you do. Custom guitar is your shop, and what this guitar is and what's special about it. Okay, um, as a company, again, I we need to make money, and um, not everybody can afford a high-end bass. And most companies, whether it's car company or stereo company, you name it, they all have a high end, they have a low end, they have in between price points, and that's all we, we try to do is create something that offers um, a lower price point. Yeah, something for and, everybody. Yeah, right. you yeah. know, you get a lot of bang for your buck and you have a lower price point. <laughs> so the only way really to do that uh, is to outsource it, and we outsource it to a Korean manufacturer right now. This space is made in Korea. It's my design, everything about it, the neck joint. Um, everything, you know, it's still a, a, a jazz bass and it's a familiar feel right. to the, the end user, customer, bass player. Um, but we made a couple innovations on this that hopefully will give us a leg up in the competition. And okay. uh, that is an interchangeable preamp system where the end user could have uh, multiple preamps from other uh, makers, brands. 
So there's about maybe 15 really popular preamps on the market right now. There's a ton of them, but 15 really popular. So what we're do, trying to do is get those brands in this uh, swappable unit. Right. So, so right now people can buy these other preamps yeah. and have them built into their guitar, but it's not easy like this. Yes, this, this is, like is a this is a uh, hot swap system more or less. Um, you would normally have a preamp that has guts, wires that you have to solder, you have to take it to your repair guy. Right. All we did is up that a little bit and go, well, we can make a piece that you can interchange quickly. So you could literally have a different preamp within seconds in there. Uh, a Barlini is in so here. So these are gonna sound like different types of guitar exactly. makers, different guitars. Yeah, so it, it, really cool. I'm not selling the, the preamps, we're selling right. the interchangeable system, but it really does change your tone because yeah. each one of these preamp manufacturers, uh, Bartolini, Aguilar, Sadowski, Ken Smith, uh, Aldair, any of these preamps that we can get in here, we, you know, we can hopefully offer. Yeah. And um, it, their tonal shaping between their mid, treble, and bass sections are, are different. You know, okay. values of pots, resistors, all that kind of stuff change the tone slightly. Right. Um, but yeah, it's like one bass and, you know, you, uh, change, your, change your tone, not your bass. Right, that's awesome. I think that's the motto that, they're, that we're working on, the branding okay. <laughs> portions of it. Awesome. So. All right, Kevin, thank you so much, man. This has been awesome. I really thank appreciate you. it. And we've been family friends for a long time. Long so it's time. It's really cool to get in here and check out what you do and just kind of we could spend hours in here. We've you know, we've already been in here multiple days, so you know, I love it. All the tools you have, all your jigs, all just the, the way you have set up the shop, like you said, you've been kind of in and out of different shops over the years, so you have that kind of experience of getting in and right. setting up a shop and I love it. So um, this has been awesome. Um, can you let my viewers know where they can find your stuff if they're interested? Uh, the website is brewbakerguitars.com, and you can hit us up there and check out the website and all the information. We try to keep it updated. Uh, Facebook, of course, uh, Brewbaker Musical Instruments, and um, on Instagram. We're still getting a few things set up, uh, but... Kevin Brubaker or Brubaker Musical Instruments or the website. So, right, there you, so have you guys it. can always look for him that way. You can Google him, Kevin Brubaker. Um, I'll also put links in the description below to his website and to his uh, social media as well. So also with us, we hope you enjoy this video. If you did, give us a like and a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you haven't. If you want to see more things, more shop visits like this, let us know in the comments because that's the stuff that we want to tell. And also, you know, Looking give some shout outs to Kevin in the, in the comments as well. We'll send them along to him. You know, let him know what you thought about his shop. So we hope you enjoyed the video. We really did. And we'll see you guys on the next one.